continuing. This is part two. And uh, I uh, will emphasize, I think, in order to try to get it done, two parts, and definitely by three parts, sort of just the headlines, and I'll try to do it chronologically. And I may have to fast forward in order to uh, say those who re will recognize, say, what is recent. And that is, uh, I would say that Einstein represented others' work and ideas. Now, uh, who? Well, if you go into the internet, and anybody's welcomed to add to this, just uh, send a uh, add-on message or even a uh, whatever, something like maybe uh, they have on the internet where it's uh, a public sort of forum and uh, open in addition. Because uh, it's natural for man to want to present the true facts and give credit where credit is due. So there's, uh, of course, uh, uh, Lorentz and Poincaré uh, and uh, Philip Leonard, uh, Maliva Marek, Herman Minkowski. Uh, there's uh, maybe uh, about two, two dozen. You'd be surprised as you read all through uh, how many names come up that uh, by logic and facts demonstrate that it's their original uh, ideas and work. And most important is that of Professor Umberto Bartosi. I think we're now about uh, 1904 and 1903 a Olinto de Pretro, an industrial engineer, uh, put forward this brilliant concept that from a small amount of mass, you can get an enormous amount of energy, and it comes into an equation that he wrote E equals mc squared. And then he explained it and emphasized it in 1903 in a, in a scientific magazine. Einstein had to discuss that with Alinti de Pedro's brother and Michael Peso and with Alinti de Pedro and known and read that article. By all standards of logical thinking. By actual fact, when pinpointed, did, did you get that from Alinti de Pedro? He said, I never read his book. Now notice his answer. He doesn't say he didn't see the magazine article or the papers or talk to him, he didn't read Alinta de Pedro's book. Well, Alinta de Pedro didn't write a book. He just would discuss that with his brother and uh, Michael Beso and Einstein. They had academic discussion, what was new and interesting, and he just wrote the scientific paper. He didn't write a book, but a Professor Umberto Bartosi wrote a book, and he is a mathematician and he is a mathematical historian. And his book, Albert Einstein, Olinto de Petro, The True History of the World's Most Famous Equation, equals MC squared. Absolutely prove it's Olinto de Petro's original work. In 1904, it was republished, I think is Atti, but at the prestigious um, Royal Science Academy of Veneto. And therefore, uh, Einstein would be in that area and talk with uh, Linda de Petro and his brother and so forth. So in my opinion, it, the proof is conclusive on logic, at least in the facts, I think. Now, Let's go chronologically then. After 1905, well, he's begun to be known, and Planck helped him. 
And he did get the position. Uh, whoever was there, I think, helped him. Uh, there are some that attack him ethnically. I said, let's stick to just the mathematical physics, what is the absolute essence and validity and value of what he puts forward. Now, in my opinion, you cannot change by something that is set and true by definition. I'll explain. Galileo said, if you go with a certain speed, a certain distance, at a certain time, I call that velocity. Your velocity is distance per unit of time. V equals D over T. It's a fundamental standard definition equation. In fact, Romar, Galileo figured everything he ever tried except the finite velocity of light. Years later, Romar obtained the finite velocity of light by saying you put c instead of v c equals d over t and then the diameter of the earth's orbit so 186 million miles it took about a thousand seconds so it came to about 186,000 miles per second tremendous speed and like that's why galileo said uh, they asked him what do you think about this light and you know he was old and and uh, his eyesight and uh, he said well if it's not blankety blank instantaneous it's awful gosh darn fast so he considered light instantaneous as far as what's practical on earth and i say that because galileo did the fundamental experiments about obtaining absolute motion uh, but i mentioned i think that einstein then would say that he the galileo principle of relativity and uh, of course, it was probably cares relativity, etc. Now, what I'm striving at is that he now is going towards instead of just a special theory of relativity, where it's uh, in uniform motion, where it could be any motion, even accelerated motion, but now. He, he takes and substitutes again. And what I'm saying is that I will define, uh, Einstein would tell you what space isn't. When I was reading him, he'd say, well, it's not this or not that. There's not a ether. Uh, fine. But what are you saying it is? I define space and time. The uh, space is a distance. Understand this. Galileo said V equals D over T. D is distance. You cannot change that definition. You can substitute C for V, but you cannot change the overall definition that it's a velocity equals distance over time. Distance is space. You cannot change that. Time is an interval. We can use that interval based on the Earth's rotation, revolution around the sun. Or you can use it then with, say, like the rubidium frequency standard. And I worked on the rubidium frequency standard. Now they use the uh, cesium standard. It is an interval. You decide on what that interval is. And for man, it's logical sense to say, well, here on Earth, it's we can get quite precise as far as we live in a gravitational field. Now, 
certain things might fluctuate a little bit, but overall, there's a center line, center line, center line of this gravitational field of Earth. You cannot change that. It can move, it can whatever, but the center line, center line, center line, X, Y, Z, three-dimensional of the Earth's gravitational center point of gravitation cannot be changed. So he then says, now listen to this. He then says that because in inertia, if you're going in a plane and you make a sudden bank turn, and I was in the air car, you get the same equivalence, he would say, of g-force, the same force as you would if you were in vertical uh, uh, gravity. Now, as he looks at the field, the gravitational field, there's only maybe one time if you take and drop things well, if you go at the same uniform of the Earth, which we have now, and it's called SINCOM, uh, orbiting satellites, and then it's direct towards the center line, center line. Isn't that correct? But he says, and all practical, now he goes practical, you're moving, and the object is moving, so it isn't a direct vertical. It forms a parabolic through the mag uh, Earth's gravitational field. And you have to express that. So he then has field equations. Well, David Hilbert is a top mathematical mathematician. Uh, Einstein would talk and write letters to Hilbert. Hilbert was going to put forward his field equations. Einstein now supposedly is given credit for the general theory of relativity, his, his field equations. Hilbert published them. Five days later, Einstein published the same. He finally now was able to get the correct field equation. He'd been trying for two years. Five days later, he now gives a lecture with the same field equations. His hype artist said, oh, Hilbert, Einstein is a genius. Hilbert plagiarized the genius Einstein. Let's look at it logically. Why would an expert mathematician to express his mathematics have to go to Einstein who flunked mathematics at the university and Eden Minkowski's and Maliva Merrick's help, etc., and especially Herman Minkowski's help. Why would he go to him? And wouldn't Einstein have said, "Well, I've got it solved and put it on," and then, then Hilbert say, "Well, yeah, this is I put it on." You understand? So complete is the facade of the of of this hoopla of Einstein. That, that's the way it is. They've convinced. It actually goes to the devil's thing of saying the lie over and over again, and that's the truth. Einstein is a plagiarist. Get that? Understand that? Because I defended him up until I saw about six months ago in the Italian American Cultural Society, Olinto Di Petro put forward equals MC squared. And then I've now spent the last six months. And that, that is the true facts. I went to the Petro by two years, and especially in 1904, in the prestigious Royal Science Academy of Veneto. Do you understand? It was actually the Petro's original E equals MC squared. Let's give credit where credit is due. Every instance, it was Hilbert. Now, I conferred with Einstein in person in 1955, and I will get to that now in part three, and that will be the concluding part. Thank you.